Well, welcome to our second webinar about um, Friendship Park Live. Um, my name is Jean LaRoe, and I'm the marketing director here at Gibbons Estates. And we have some good things to share with you today about Gibbons Estates and Friendship Park. Um, for those of you who don't know us, I wanted to just give you a quick um, intro to who we are. Um, there are a few people that joined us on the first webinar, but some of you are new, so we wanted to make sure everyone was kind of starting fresh with the same information. Um, so I wanted to let you know that Gibbons Estates began as a small retirement community about 40 years ago. And over the years, we've evolved, we've expanded, and we've renovated to keep current with market demands and industry trends. And now our campus has over 200 acres of rolling hills, meadows, and woods, as well as 410 independent living residences that range from small studio apartments to large, almost 4,000 square foot, two-story cottages. We have quite a variety of residential living options here on, on our campus. We also have a continuum of care, including home care services, assisted living, short-term rehabilitation services, and um, long-term skilled nursing services. Uh, if and when you need those, they're here for you. Because of the demand of retirement living options, um, if any of you have heard of baby boomers, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, we're expanding once again by adding 80 new apartment homes called Friendship Park right here in the heart of our campus. And um, they're conveniently located to many of the amenities such as dining, wellness, and art studios and library and things like that um, within the campus um, as it already exists. So today you're gonna to hear from a few of our key team members who wanna share with you highlights about um, various resident activities on campus and a little bit about the renovation work that we're doing. Um, we won't have enough time to cover everything, but we hope to paint a picture for you of what life is like at Gibbons Estates. And um, to quote many residents, there are too many things to do here, you'll never be bored. So with that, I wanted to turn it back over to Jason so he can get us started. Hi, thank you, Jean. Good afternoon, I'm Jason Neiman with Good Brand Company. We're a marketing partner with Givens Estates and um, we um, love the opportunity to work with Givens on putting these webinars together. So thank you for um, having us help moderate these. It always helps. Um, so basically what we'd like to do today is in, uh, introduce the team that's going to be on for today. Those of you that have been on with us um, in the last one will kind of recognize some of the faces, but I'd like to introduce the team. Um, we've got Kenneth Jensen. He is our um, dining services director. We've got um, David Smith and David Smith is um, our Sorry, David Smith is, is in charge of um, all of our on-campus um, amenities and, and the community in general as a, as a whole. And then we've got um, Sally Ann. Sally Ann is also on with us today. Thank you for being here, Sally Ann McVeigh. And she is in charge of life enrichment opportunities for, for our residents. And we've also got Leslie Lang. Leslie Lang, as you know, is um, one of our sales counselors and really the face of our community. She meets with a lot of you um, and moves forward. So we've got a lot of great things to talk about today and we'd love to just get right into it. And what I'd like to do is kick off with Kenneth Jensen, um, if we could. And I have a couple questions for you, Kenneth, that maybe we can get into. Um, I'd love to know um, from Friendship Park, and I know we're doing a lot of things right now at Gibbons, um, in particular around the changing world that we live in. So if you want to yeah. spend just a minute or two talking about that, and then if yeah. you could kind of go into um, the new, a little bit more detail in the new dining venues, yeah. and then obviously talking about um, some of the things that will, life will be like when we move to the Friendship Park campus. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as Jason mentioned, I'm Kenneth Jensen. I'm the Director of Dining Services here at the community. Been a part of uh, Given States uh, since 2012, and uh, over that, uh, over this past eight years, been, there's been many changes to the program, and uh, 
I'm uh, very excited to, to work with uh, all the residents uh, that are part of the campus in, in creating those changes and implementing those changes. So most recently, um, we have started uh, at the uh, end of 2019, started a, a brand new dining renovation that we're all very excited about. <clears throat> And um, we vacated our current uh, dining operation and set up a, a temporary dining operation in our Performing Arts Center. And uh, unfortunately, um, come March of, of this year, we all uh, had the, were faced with the challenge and worked through uh, all the changing uh, COVID-19 uh, operations and guidelines. So we are currently uh, doing some uh, a few deliveries across campus, anywhere between 500 and 600 meal deliveries across campus um, for our, our, our different levels of care. And um, providing that uh, that level of service comes with challenges that, uh, that we face with each day, but we've been uh, very, very excited to work through those challenges. And of course, during that time, uh, we've had to stay focused on um, beginning and, and hopefully starting uh, three brand new venues at the end of this year. Um, these venues that, um, that have been created, the three venues that I'm going to talk about here shortly, um, have all been created uh, basically off of direct response and uh, guidance from our current residents and, of course, our future residents that we're going to have on campus. Uh, we worked very closely with our marketing department to do uh, focus groups. And uh, out of those focus groups and out of um, our feedback from our current resident population, it started us off on a great path to create these three brand new venues that I want to talk about here shortly. Uh, just a couple things that I wanted to highlight on some of the main feedback that we've received from residents and, and those focus groups of future residents were facts that residents wanted some great gathering spaces where they can enjoy uh, great food, great service, and uh, some great um, fellowship and uh, a friendship with residents and family members where they could bring folks to kind of a central hub um, for our campus. So that was one of the feedbacks. Uh, another feedback was they wanted something that was kind of a, a quick service. Uh, we want, we, we're a very busy community. Uh, folks that live out on our campus have some great options to either to relax and enjoy or, or to go out and uh, experience everything that's offered here on campus and, and of course off campus. So uh, folks wanted a, a quick service and then in addition to that they wanted a, a sit-down restaurant style service because of course we're in Western Carolina with uh, many many great restaurants between downtown Asheville and downtown Hendersonville and um, but uh, so we wanted to do what we can here on this campus and kind of uh, be very competitive with those uh, nicer restaurants in downtown Asheville so uh, that was some good direct feedback and that's what started us on this path so I'm going to jump into the three venues real quick, Jason, and then I'll finish up. Sounds good. Um, so the first venue that I wanted to talk about, and I'm not sure if you can show that slide. I'm not sure if that slide is showing, but yeah, uh, the social okay. brew. Yeah, the social brew is our, is our first venue. Um, that social brew is located on the first floor in our Oxford Commons building. Um, it's going to take on kind of a Starbucks feel in the morning, offering some uh, great coffees and some gourmet coffees and smoothies and some great breakfast items. And also it's going to be a, a complement to our wellness program. We have a, an amazing wellness program here on campus and uh, we want to uh, partner with them and, and offer items that uh, if, you're, if you're going down and working on a certain part of your body, we're going we're gonna to provide the nutritional side of that and, and complement uh, that workout. So that's going to be the feel in the AM. And then in the PM, it's going to transition to uh, a wine and tapas uh, bar in the evening where residents can come and enjoy um, some great conversation and order some light appetizers maybe before they uh, go down to another uh, venue here on campus or maybe before they head off campus. Uh, so that space will, will be a, a great space, uh, seating roughly between 40 and 50 residents and guests. And uh, we're just, we're very excited about that, uh, that socialization that's going to take place on that, in that venue. The next venue I want to talk about is Market and Craft. Uh, Market and Craft is going to be um, living on the ground floor um, here in Oxford Commons building. Uh, it's a very engaging space where residents will interact very closely with the culinary team. Uh, residents and guests and, and also team members will be able to order from the space and 
and be um, somewhat specific on how they want their soup or sa um, their sandwich or salad made. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a pizza oven where residents and guests and team members can walk up and order their own personal pizza. And then also a, a chef's creation station, uh, which I believe is uh, shown in that photo where residents uh, and, and folks will be able to walk up and order uh, from a rotisserie and have a nice carved kind of a home style feel uh, to that space. Um, so the market and craft is going to offer uh, a, an array of options that uh, we're very excited about. And, and that is one of the main things that residents wanted was uh, uh, options within the spaces. The next venue I wanted to talk about in the last venue is called Tureen. Tureen is our fully weighted restaurant, uh, which will um, seat around 96 residents and guests. The main feature of the space, of course, besides the amazing food and service that you all will receive, is our French cooking suite. Uh, it's kind of in the back left there of that photo. Um, it's going to be an open concept kitchen uh, where you'll be able to see all the amazing product and uh, meals coming out of that space. Uh, so we're very excited about that French cooking suite. It's almost uh, a, it's a one of a kind space. Um, within our um, life plan community industry. You don't see too many of these, uh, these French cooking suites being in, in, installed in a, in a dining venue such as ours. So that's, uh, that's what's happening within dining services. So between working uh, with those five, 600 meal deliveries a day, planning and executing these three brand new venues that are opening up um, at the end of 2020 and the beginning of 21, uh, dining services is staying pretty busy these days. I bet. And so um, a question came in while you were on. Um, yeah. and I just wanted to get a quick clarification real quick. Um, Friendship Park is part of Givens Estates and it is on the campus at Givens yep. Estates. So um, just to clarify that in case there were any questions. So yep. Kenneth, there are some incredible new dining venues. Um, did you, can you just kind of give a real quick summary one more time? Cause I got another question. Um, timing on these venues as well. Uh, in regarding the opening or the operating of them? Um, let's say both. Why okay, not? so both. So uh, Social Brew, which is the one that's living up on the uh, first floor in Oxford Commons, that is currently scheduled to open uh, roughly the end of November, beginning of December. Um, the Market and Craft and Tureen are currently scheduled to open at the be very beginning of 21. Um, social brew operating hours uh, will be open in both a.m. and p.m. most likely shut down um, at some point at lunchtime because we'll have the other venues that are open during that um, and then Tureen will be starting off um, um, operating uh, most likely four days in the evening um, to kind of that's our kind of our uh, fine dining um, establishment um, that uh, folks will be having to the, at the start of it um, in the, at the dinner time, at the evening time for that option. And then Market and Craft will be open six days a week, uh, Monday through Saturday uh, for, for meal services for both lunch and dinner. Great. And do, can you give, uh, you may not know this yet because I know this is still um, a little bit in flux, but can you give rough price points around each venue? So what I can uh, what I can talk to regarding the price points is we're going to offer residents an array of options in all three venues at different price points. So, you know, I just mentioned Tureen is kind of the more fine dining space. So you may have an option, you know, if we're serving a, a specific type of uh, steak or a certain type of uh, seafood that might be a little bit higher dollar item, you know, folks will have those options. But if they want to go in there and maybe have some sort of uh, gourmet bison burger that might be a 12 or $15 range. Folks are going to have uh, many different options between all three venues to pick from um, to give them to stretch those dining dollars as far as they want. Great. Thank you for that, Kenneth. Yeah. Great information. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, you. Sally Ann, we're going to move to Sally Ann McVeigh, our life enrichment coordinator. Um, Sally Ann, I'd love for you to talk about the lifeblood sort of of the community, if you could, um, what the independent living and, and of course, some of our other healthcare too, but um, primarily our independent living and, and Friendship Park, what's going to be happening with independent living as far as life enrichment goes? Well, independent living continues to just try to meet the needs that are presented as we have new residents 
If they're more active, we'll take them zip lining, bicycling, rafting. If they're less active, we plan some of the mind games and less uh, physically involved opportunities. We love to take day trips and do a lot of day trips around the area. Uh, that can be from a Lazoom bus ride downtown Asheville to a brewery, to the frescoes up in the mountains, to, oh golly, the BMW plant down in South Carolina so that we try to touch on all the different interests that the residents bring with them. Uh, we also like to periodically do overnight trips and that has ranged from Kentucky horse country to mostly the coast, Savannah, Charleston, um, uh, Wilmington and, and areas of that nature that we don't enjoy the beach here in the mountains unless we take a trip to the coast. <laughs> we have evening concerts and um, enjoy that opportunity. We are going to have our first dueling pianos on campus Thursday night. They're going to bring the uh, truck pulling a flatbed with two pianists on the back and we'll see how that goes since we're not able to gather in our concert hall one, because of renovations, and two, because of COVID right now. Um, most folks enjoy a variety of music, so generally those evening concerts can be from soloists to Land of the Sky Symphony to um, the Smoky Mountain Brass to opera. It just kind of depends on who we schedule when as to how often those generally twice a month when we're not in a COVID situation um, entertainment kinds of uh, events happen. Daily um, classes, from art classes to joining with our um, retirement uh, education center in Asheville that meets at UNCA, bringing professors onto campus to teach things from global warming and concerns for our environment to historical studies to book studies and, and more of the like that you might take in a retirement educational facility. Um, outside presenters from Deepwood Mushrooms to Chairman Mao. <laughs> I mean, if you've got an interest, bring it to us and we will try to make something happen with it. And that's where independent living uh, residents take on responsibilities for some of our interest groups. We've got a bocce ball group that has just started that we're still trying to find out who else on campus wants to play bocce ball. We started playing ping pong again this week and we've got a group that meets regularly to play croquet. So all those outside activities are happening now and keeping folks um, with a little so social distancing still having an opportunity to gather together. Our health center and assisted living program for their residents regularly and do a variety of things for them as well. I don't have as much detail there, so would be better off with just kind of answering some questions if you have that. Yep, we certainly do. So a couple of questions came through. Um, I think these are some good ones. Our, um, so Mill asks, are any longer trips or cruises offered? We haven't done any cruises. That's something that we can certainly facilitate. Um, we do have several travel agencies in town that cater to some retirement communities that we have worked with in the past. I am not aware of any of the other communities going on cruises with them, but I can check into that. And we certainly do the overnight trips, as I was mentioning, to Savannah and Wilmington. We generally just do a three day, two night kind of thing. And then for longer extended trips, try to gather folks with a different group. Right. Um, another question would be, um, are any residents um, able to do performances pretty easily like piano, sax, voice, for example, are there groups for that? Um, we don't have a saxophone group, but we certainly <laughs> have opportunities for folks to perform. And if they're interested in that, we will make that happen. I need to set up a recording date right now with actually two of our staff members who are doing um, some singing and, and I think mostly guitar with that. But our talent shows, they may sound like 
the old corny kinds of things of the past, but the residents love seeing one another share their gifts and their graces. And so that's always been a popular time to do some of that as well. Nice. We do have a choir that um, rehearses and sings regularly and a chiming group, hand chimes, um, and then a m small men's, uh, but not a, a cappella, but just a men's chorus, I guess you'd say. Great. Well, obviously, um, lots of life going on at Gibbons. And then obviously, when Friendship Park um, comes online, it's going to be a another group of people that have these type of interest in involved as well. So it's going to be a great opportunity to get get back to life as normal. Um, who knows when cruises will start up again, right? But um, exactly. we'll, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed with COVID that that goes away quickly and people will be able to do that again. Thank you, Sally Ann. Um, Certainly. So David Smith, Facility Services Director. David, um, this kind of goes in, I know Sally Ann was talking a little about the environment earlier, and I know that's one of your main focuses too um, on campus in general, but we'd love to hear a little bit about you um, with the amenities and things that we don't normally find at other senior living communities or campuses out there. Sure, thanks, Jason. Um, yeah, and kind of also, as, as Kenneth talked about, Asheville is unique in its food culture, uh, and it's why a lot of people want to move to this region. And another one of those amenities we have are the mountains and the view, and Givens the Estates tries to take full advantage of that. Um, we do our landscaping in a sustainable and environmentally responsible manner. Um, you'll see a lot of communities do um, steep slopes in, um, and introduce species um, or turf and that sort of thing. And we use native meadow mixes on campus. In fact, we've got about uh, 14 acres of native meadows on campus to help support uh, bee populations and wildlife pollinators, um, something that we're really proud of. We partner with the Asheville Fire Department to actually do some uh, controlled burning in those meadows, and that's something that's always exciting uh, for, for the folks that live on campus. Um, another one of the great things that we do is we do our own leaf composting. We remove about 80,000 pounds of leaves from the campus every year, and we actually break those leaves down, and then we use them in either resident vegetable gardens um, or like as a top dressing on some of the turf areas that we have on campus. So we try to look at the landscape um, a little bit more holistically um, and bigger picture and how it fits in, not just from an aesthetic standpoint, which is also very important, but trying to support a lot of our native plants and animals as well. Great. Why don't, can you talk a little bit about um, solar on campus? I sure can. So. Um, Solar power is something that we have been talking about. I've been at Givens for 15 years, and it's something that we've been talking about for the entire time that I've been there. Um, and just this year, we've had the opportunity to install solar panels on the grounds building, uh, but uh, there's enough panels on that building that supply power for the grounds and maintenance building. Um, so we are um, still connected to the grid. So if we need some additional power or if we have um, a week or two of rain that can happen sometimes here in the mountains. Um, we, we still have that reliable power source, uh, but it, it's a net metering system um, and it's a 30 kilowatt uh, panel system. So um, wow. we were very excited about that. And all this was made possible um, from a generous donation from one of our residents. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, um, you made mention of raised gardens or gar resident gardens. Can you talk a little bit about the hiking trails and the wood shop and the gardens and things like that? Sure, I'd be happy to. So we have uh, five miles of hiking trails on campus. Again, um, that's not something that you're typically gonna find in your average retirement community. Uh, beautiful views of Pisgah National Forest. You can see uh, part of the Biltmore State um, from our campus as well and as a little bit into town. Um, and uh, just spectacular views, uh, get to take in nature. The great place right now, if you, um, in these times of a little bit of isolation, uh, we have an opportunity for you to do that. Um, so it, it's a fantastic way for you to still be active and doing things, uh, but also do it in a safe manner. And when, when we get through this, those trails will still be there and you'll still be able to use them. 
Um, so it's something that it's not all of our residents that are able to take advantage of that, but we have a very dedicated group um, that loves to get out on our trails and, and be in nature. Um, and then, I'll, yeah, I'll move on to the kind of greenhouse and gardens. Um, we, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, there's a greenhouse. Sorry, Jean. Uh, so we, we have a state-of-the-art greenhouse. Um, it's uh, computer operated um, and the roof opens and closes as needed. Um, most residents either use it for overwintering of plants, um, but several folks also use it to start seeds in the springtime. Um, and it's just a great resource. Um, that space, it's, uh, we manage the actual building itself, but residents actually manage the operations of that space. So they, it's, it's for residents by residents, right? So they, they kind of self-lease that and water it on their own and take care of pests and do the cleanup in that building. Uh, we make sure the structure is operating like it's supposed to, but it's, it's a really neat system. And then right beside our greenhouse, I don't think we have a picture of it, unfortunately, but we do have some raised beds. Um, mm -hmm. And so you can get um, put, put into a system uh, where you would like to have a vegetable garden and we provide you with the opportunity to, to grow veg vegetables. Located in that same area um, is our new wood shop. And uh, the woodworking group is very active on campus. Um, they do a huge toy drive, which is what you're seeing um, on the picture that Jean's sharing now uh, for some underprivileged children uh, out in the community. And it's just, just a great community relations builder. And I'm gonna tell you, these guys are, are master craftsmen. It's just, it's phenomenal um, what, what some of those guys can do. I'm always awed and inspired by their talent. Guys and gals, it looks like we have Guys a, and gals, yes, I apologize to the gals out there too. That's we right. We have a few women that do that. We also have wood carving, uh, which is a separate group, um, and there's several female residents in that group as well. That's great. Um, and I'm going to throw this question to Sally Ann and David. Um, there's been a few questions that have come through about um, additional cost in in addition to your monthly fees or your or your um, fees in general. So could you just kind of talk about in general, are there additional costs in, I'm sure Sally Ann for, for external trips and things like that, but can you talk a little bit about that and how that works? I'll, I'll begin, David. Um, in terms of concerts and a number of speakers and teachers that come on campus, those are all covered in your fee, but then there are special programs, um, specific art classes that we have a limit to that instructors coming in from off campus, and that would have an, a sign up through our office and you would agree to have that billed to your account. Um, the OLLI program that we've partnered with, with from UNCA, we've started offering their classes here on campus and so have started charging um, a fee to pay for those instructors that come. The overnight trips, if we take a day trip to um, Abington for Barter Theater, you've got to include bus fare, theater ticket, meals. So yes, there are additional charges, but it, it greatly depends on the event. And there are things for those with a smaller pocketbook and those that are willing to sp spend what they have left. Right, and what about you, David? Yeah, kind of the same thing. It, it depends on the service. Um, so generally speaking, um, you know, uh, anything associated with the maintenance of building itself, we take care of that. Um, general landscape management, we take care of that. Uh, tree, shrub replacement, all your lawn mowing services, all the leaf removal, fertilization. Uh, gutter cleaning, you don't have to worry about that anymore. We take care of that for you. Um, if you want to do something custom, like above and beyond what we would consider our standard landscape service, or if you want to enclose a porch or something like that, there would be some additional um, cost associated with that. So I always recommend that folks reach out to me and we can kind of have that conversation um, or at time of move in, you may be talking to marketing about that. And that varies a little bit too, depending on your location of campus. We don't allow personalization in many areas, such as the Friendship Park areas, but other areas we, we will allow some personalization and customization. That's great. Good, good questions coming in. Um, one more for Sally Ann. Um, 
is it in a normal world? And I think that was a great question in a normal world um, where we don't have, you know, COVID happening. Um, how often are overnight trips? Overnight trips really since I've been here have just been in the spring of the year. When I first came and I've been here 10 years, we, they did a trip in the spring and the fall, but we just haven't had enough folks to f sign up to make it possible to do it twice a year. A lot of folks um, go with another company here in town on more regular trips and we can share information about that at another time. But um, in terms of the demand that seems to come from our residents right now. Now with folks coming into Friendship Park, that may alter completely and we may go back to two or three or maybe even add four in there. I can't say for sure. Great, good answer. Um, one question that came in a little bit earlier and we didn't get a chance because we were in the middle of something else, but um, someone asked if Friendship Park was independent living. And so um, the answer to that is absolutely yes, it's independent living. And those people um, are going to have full access to all the amenities and different things on campus at Givens Estates. Um, there will be a time um, that if, if healthcare is needed, they can move over to the healthcare park, but um, at the Friendship Park, um, in the new part of that, it will be independent living exclusively. Good, another good question. So, okay, so I'm going to introduce Leslie here, Leslie Lang. Um, she is our marketing representative, and there's a question that goes along with me introducing you and having you start um, talking a little bit about yours. So I'm gonna kick off with a question. I'm gonna throw you a curveball here. Okay. Kick off with a question, um, and it's a really great question, but I think it really speaks to, um, it really speaks to probably something that's in the back of a lot of people's minds. And here's the question. Um, my spouse, uh, Stephen asks, my spouse and I are both 66 this year and looking at retirement community options, but a little concerned whether we are still too young for these communities. Looking at a mountain home purchase as an interim step and staying in Raleigh in our home here for now, what is the age that your community residents come in at? And I thought that was really great and it really kind of sets you up for what your specialty is here. So that's your question to start with. Okay, and that can be a webinar by itself. <laughs> <laughs> True. So, but uh, to answer the question, first of all, Givens Estates is a, a sizable community with a lot of options. We have, by the time this is all done with Friendship Park, you can say close to 800 residents. So when you have new construction, we do tend to see a different proactive, earlier, younger demographic of people that are making a move. So that's why Sally Ann was saying, well, with Friendship Park, we may be having more of that demand because you do tend to see a younger group of people. So talking about the whole community as a whole, we have residents that are in their early 60s up to 100 years of age in independent living. So you've got single, you've got couples, you've got um, same-sex couples, you've got people that are religious, you've got people that are more Republican or Democrat, you've got community. You have a little bit of everything. And age is definitely something that people want to consider. Is this community going to be for me? Am I going to fit in? Are there going to be other people like me in the community? So Asheville itself is a hodgepodge of everything. Thing. People are moving to Asheville from all over the world, so you're going to get a lot of demographics there. So with that, it used to be, I've been at Givens about 10 years, so it used to be when I first started there, here, that people kind of were already living in Asheville and retired, bought a place in Asheville, lived there, got on a wait list, and then eventually moved to Givens Estates. Well, we're seeing a newer trend that as people are retiring, they're going ahead and investing in the retirement community rather than buying at the height of a real estate market and paying top dollar for that. They're going ahead and being in a community for independent living, and then they don't have to wait until later. So with that, you know, you're getting people younger and younger. Overall, I think now it's safe to say that the average, or out of all 800 people, average move-in age is around 74. 
it would not surprise me if you saw that average being younger with the Friendship Park. Recently, we did Creekside apartment homes and we saw that that average was younger also. So I don't see any reason to not see that trending again. And looking at the, the number of the people that we have already under contract through phase one and phase two, we are seeing that as well. I'd have to really look up and see what those numbers and statistics are. I can't remember right off the top of my head. Somebody had asked that and I sense that it might be you <laughs> that, that asked me that question. So lots of ranges there. Great. Were, there, were there other parts to that question I haven't answered yet? <laughs> nope, that, I, think, I think you did a great job. Uh, another question that came through and, um, oh, and by the way, um, we've just put a poll up um, and we'd love for you to answer polls whenever they pop up if possible. Um, we just getting, it's good for us to get good information for you. So um, we've got a poll up here about getting to know you a little bit and just getting more info. Um, Leslie. Jason. Yes. May I interrupt a minute? Please. Just want to tag on to Leslie's and say, I hear over and over again, I wish I came sooner. Right. Yeah. Because there are so many residents that don't get to take advantage of what life enrichment offers on campus because they've waited to the, they're physically not able to. Right. So. And you, another bullet point I'll add to that, sorry, Jason, is okay. like somebody was saying, baby boomers, we're all familiar with that term. And we see on the charts that it just straight incline of the demand for these types of communities, which is why we had the last webinar, we were talking about all the strategic planning and the updating and investing in these communities to prepare for that. So that's also gonna drive for an, a younger average move-in age. Hope that helps. It does. <laughs> um, and, and as anecdotally, I will tell you that, um, you know, we work with a lot of different senior living communities across the country and across the board in my last 13, 14 years in this industry, um, Sally Ann, you're dead on. Every single resident or potential resident that we interview, they always say a couple of things. They say, um, I should have done it at least two years earlier than we did because we we feel like we could have made more out of living there. And the second thing that they always say, which I think is really important, is that if they do have family members or, or children in particular, that it's the greatest gift they could have given yeah. um, by basically making the decision to do it and then taking that burden off of the family in case at some point something were to happen um, from a health perspective. So I think both of those um, both of those reasonings are really, you're never really too young to do this. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions in the industry across the board that um, senior living communities are either assisted living or skilled nursing, but they really don't understand the independent living part of this and how the socialization of it with other residents and the activity and the knowledge that you get, education about living healthy, fitness, eating healthy, all the things that we're all talking about today is just such a critical um, critical thing for people as we age. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to add that anecdotally as we as we move through um, some of the other things. Um, Leslie, let's uh, let's talk about one other, a couple of other things. Um, and one interesting thing that I wanted you to talk about is what what is the timing? How what is the situation right now with Friendship Park? Um, especially with COVID going on, how is it that people can get in touch with you and talk through? the process of maybe looking at what their options are. Okay. Um, is there a slide for my information on there? So She's getting to it. Yes, I think she's muted, but she's yeah. saying yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, we will flash that up, but definitely email me, call me, let me know what it is that I can best help you. I mean, this is a big decision. This is a big deal and there's a lot of information and obviously we can't have an eight hour long webinar call to tell you everything. There you go, there's my contact information. Uh, and I will also be sending an email thanking all of you for attending. We will also have a recording of this webinar so that you can see it again. You can also share it with friends or maybe a spouse that wasn't able to join you or a family member. And some of you may not live in Asheville, and because of COVID, we can't have hundreds of people in and out of our campus. 
at all times. So what we're doing is I'm offering phone appointments to answer your questions. There's something that may be more important to you than somebody else. So we can hone in on that for you uh, personally. I can help you evaluate finances. I can help you determine all of the different floor plan options. We can talk about the timing. Some of you may be ready to move immediately. There are some times that you can strike lucky and get something that's available. It's not how I wanna suggest that you plan for your future, but there are moments when that, that is needed. Sometimes that comes up. So we do have a wait list. I can talk to you individually about how our wait lists work. I can explain to you all the finances of the, the entry fees, the monthly fees, the inclusions, the continuum of care, how those prices work, what is the best financial choice for you. And then uh, Friendship Park, because the, the biggest benefit of that, and we talked a little bit about this at the last webinar, is you get the opportunity to plan in advance rather than waiting for the phone to ring going, hey, I got your place and you're moving in 90 days. There's a lot to do with that selling a home and having all that timing work. So having an opportunity to plan for something year and a half advance, you know exactly what floor plan, what position it's in, and you get excited about it. You know what items of furniture, clothing, hobby items that you do want to bring well in advance. And if selling your home is of a question and concern to you, because it usually is for most people, we have a plan to help you with that. So let me know, we can talk about that. I won't take a, a lot of time to discuss that right now, but that's why I have a job that I love. Put me to work. Tell me how I can best help you. Great. A um, Couple of questions for you, Leslie. How long is the average wait time on the wait list? So that's a big question. So my generic response to that is probably, I'd say I would tell people two and a half to three year average wait. There are some things that could come sooner and there are some things that could definitely come later. Cottages right now are our lowest turning over items on the campus. So I would say that's three plus years, but sometimes you don't always know when something is gonna come available, but we do kind of evaluate and see what are the typical averages. So if you're looking three years or sooner, Friendship Park is definitely an avenue that I would wanna start with you to see if that works for you. But if you want 4,000 square feet, maybe Friendship Park isn't the right option. But on that note, we have everything from 300 square foot studios to over 4,000 square foot cottage homes and everything in between. So chances are we're going to find something that's going to work for you. And is it easy to upside or upsize or downsize after you move in as well, Leslie? So Givens Estates is a continuum care community. So not only is it continuum of care, it's also continuum of lifestyle. So sometimes people will move on to our campus and I got a, a couple that moved from Morganton. They're like 250 acres. And the idea of <laughs> them being in an apartment building with a hundred and something other apartments around them, which is what Oxford Commons is, eh -eh, wasn't going to work for them. But this um, particular person had macular and was losing their sight. So they knew that maybe down the road, being out in a single family home on our campus was not gonna be the right fit. So we already have a plan in place that if that's not the right fit, they can always then change and move to an apartment to, to be next to everything. Or somebody might be in a cottage and they're not driving anymore. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a situation. And when you have a campus that offers so many different options, we can then customize to you personally at the time that you're moving in, as well as life changes and your needs also change. So it's better to do that and go ahead and get in a community rather than waiting until later when you have to think about the hardest times of your life when we can just change along with you. Right. There's a way to talk about that financially. So when we talk, I can tell you how that happens. But in a nutshell, you don't have to pay a whole entry fee all over again. We'll talk about it. Great. Um, I'm going to throw a couple of questions over to Jean, if I could. Um, first question is, um, can you talk a little bit about the timing for Friendship Park, when it's going to be open, um, uh, what the sizes are going to be roughly? Just give us kind of an overview, Jean, if you could. And then the second question I'm going to, I'm going to give you now that you can answer. Um, it's kind of a specific question, but I think it's important. Um, 
from a life care standpoint, what kind of a contract do you offer? Type A, type B, or type C? Okay. And um, for those of you on the webinar that that might be Greek knowledge, um, we, we, you can reach out to Leslie and she can give you more information, but it really talks about the types of services that um, Givens Estates provides, whether or not healthcare is included and all those kinds of things. So, um, but if you could give just a little bit of a brief overview of both of those things, that would be great, Jean. Sure, I can do that. And I'm going to put a plug in for our next webinar because dollars and cents, we're really going to get into the money part of things. Um, but for today's webinar, I want to just kind of give you that quick overview of we are a type C contract. Givens Estates is um, regulated by the Department of Insurance here in North Carolina. They regulate all of the um, uh, continuing care retirement community is also known as life plan communities. You'll hear those terms interchangeably. Um, so we're a type C contract, which means we're a fee for service. And in general, what that means to you is that your entrance fee that you pay and your monthly fee that you pay in independent living will be lower than our competitors entrance fee and monthly fee for a similar size residence if they're a type A contract for instance. So with a type C contract, which is what we are, you kind of pay as you go. If you need assisted living or you need um, the long-term care in the um, health center, then you pay those market rates when you get there. Um, I will say that we're seeing fewer and fewer people that actually stay for very long in those areas. Um, we have a robust home care program here on our campus. So, um, help people stay independent longer um, by you know, just providing some additional services in their independent living residence. Given the state's residents also have the option of, you know, it's all self-directed. We're not gonna tell you, you have to move, which is a little bit more typical in a type A contract. They really kind of wanna move you along um, and through the continuum of care, but we are very in, much in support of having you stay in independent living as long as you want to. Um, you could bring in home care services into your home. You could bring hospice into your home in independent living here at, on our campus. And that is your choice. It's definitely resident directed. So that's kind of type C contract at Givens Estates in a nutshell. We will dive more deeply into that subject next week. So please join us for that. Um, the other question you had for me was timing and a little bit about Friendship Park. Um, we are um, working on foundations and footings and elevator shafts and stairwells. We have a live webcam that you can access from our Facebook page. Um, and so you can kind of see what's going on. And um, so we are very much in the throes of construction. Um, and the plan is the buildings will be built in two different phases. So the first building is a little bit further along in the process than the second building. Uh, the first building will be ready for occupancy in um, kind of the late summer, say around August or so of 2021. So a little bit over a year from now. So you have plenty of time to time and plan like Leslie was um, inferring, you know, you can really kind of say, okay, I know I'm gonna be moving in this window of time. It just makes it easier to plan. And then the second building is gonna follow a couple months later, October, November kind of time frame. Of course, these dates are a little bit fluid right now because of weather. Um, you know, when we've had lots of rain, sometimes things kind of slow down. We had, I think twice as many rain days in May than was budgeted for in the calendar. So, you know, you lose <laughs> four days here and you make them up somewhere else. So um, the construction team is really trying their best to stay on track as closely as possible to, um, to the, you know, the schedule. So we're super excited. We do have available, a few available apartments in the second building. So Leslie is more than happy to talk to you about what's available and see if we have, we, we have one bedroom dens, we have two bedroom apartments and we have two bedroom den apartments. So we have three different types of apartments but within those, there are 13 different floor plans. So there's a lot of variety, um, really hard to explain all of it on a webinar, but um, we can email you floor plans and we can, we can talk you through all your options. 
uh, some of the features of the buildings and the apartments themselves are that the buildings are kind of designed to fit in the space so of, of the, the park itself. So it's not just a big rectangle. They've got lots of different ins and outs um, along the walls. So most of the apartments have windows on two sides. At, some even have a little window on a third side, depending on how it's laid out. So you get lots of natural light in these apartments. Um, they have nine foot ceilings, open floor plans. Even the one bedroom den has two full baths. That was a big thing that we heard from our focus groups that you know two full baths were really, really key. Um, and some of the ground floor apartments have walkout patios without any railings. So those of you have, who have dogs that need to scoot out the door, you don't have to worry about getting on an elevator or walking down a hallway. You can just go right out your patio door and hit the paths that are going to be beautifully landscaped by our, our grounds crew. Great. A couple of other questions. Is there a one bedroom without a den in Friendship Park? There is not. Okay. The one bedroom with a den is about 900 square feet. The two bedroom is in the 1100 square foot range and the two bedroom den is, you know, 12 to 1350. Great. And a couple of, um, couple of healthcare questions. Is there memory care at Gibbons Estates? Currently, we do not have a specific dedicated memory care area, but part of our strategic plan uh, is to build a new assisted living building which is going to be adjacent to the Friendship Park buildings. And within that building, we will have a designated memory care area. So we're looking forward to having that back on campus. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we do take care of residents in assisted living and the health center who have memory impairment. Great. Great. And Can then I add another to question. That? Just, just Sorry, quick. David, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to add, we, we, Jean's right, but we do, uh, partner with another nonprofit um, called Memory Care, and while they're they're not ex exactly part of Givens Estates, we have a great working relationship with them, and that they are on our campus, and so that that is accessible to folks that that might have that need. Great. Right. And then the other question, um, and as far as healthcare is, does your healthcare um, accept Medicare? Yes. So in, for short-term rehab, we accept a Medicare for, um, you know, inpatient short-term rehab as well as outpatient therapy services. We have in our wellness center here in Oxford Commons, we are um, redesigning that and are, and are going to have a dedicated space for physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. So your outpatient services um, will be available and medic care covers that as well, you know, with a, with a prescription from your physician. And then in our health center, we're also Medicaid certified. So for those residents who have the, um, you know, kind of bad luck of being um, in long-term care for a long time and potentially outlive their money, which is probably the number one fear we all have is that we don't want to outlive our money. You are in a place where we're going to continue to take care of you. We've got the Medicaid services that, you know, help offset the cost. And then we have our resident assistance fund that helps offset the cost of taking care of folks that have truly exhausted their resources and may only have their social security check to their name. Incredible. Um, that's also a benefit of a not-for-profit versus a for-profit is you have some of those resources that can, can benefit your residents at that point if they need it. Um, one other question that I think hasn't been answered, I will say that if there were questions that came up um, and you feel like they weren't answered, I'm sorry, they've been peppering in and I'm trying my best to get to them. But if for some reason they're not, we've got a list of all the questions and who asked it. And we, I'm sure Leslie will be reaching out um, with some more information on that um, after the webinar is complete. One other question. Um, and it goes back to an earlier question about age. What's the median age right now of your independent living residents? Any idea? I do know the answer to that too. And it's really an interesting phenomenon because, you know, we're moving younger people in, but everyone gets older every year, right? And then there are the people that, you know, pass on or move on to the health center areas or in assisted living. So it's a moving average but it always seems to hover around 82. Okay. 
So in independent living that, I mean, and I have been here seven years and I'm kind of a numbers cruncher kind of person and they can all attest to that, um, that I do look at those things and it is right around 82. Awesome. Okay, well, we are getting ready to um, hit right up against our four o'clock mark. Um, I do want to remind everybody that there are a couple of other uh, webinars that are gonna take place. One on July 8th at three o'clock on, it's called Dollars and Cents at Friendship Park. And we will be covering um, all kinds of information basically about contract types that we talked about today, enrollment fees, monthly fees, um, we'll compare cost of remaining in your home versus moving to a community. So there will be some really great information there. Um, and um, we'll have some really great people on as well that have some really great expertise within that. Then we also have another um, webinar scheduled for July 16th, and that is going to be our resident panel. Um, and you'll have the opportunity to hear from actual residents what it's like to live at Gibbons um, and what it's going to be like to live at Friendship Park, of course. And then you can pepper them with questions on, um, you know, what life is like and get kind of real about, you know, what does this mean to their families and what does it mean to them and uh, really get some incredible insights from those people as well. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining today. Thank you so much for all the great questions. David, Leslie, Sally Ann, Kenneth, Gene, Kim, thanks for helping us moderate as well. We appreciate you. Um, so thank you very much for everybody for joining us. Um, feel free to reach out to Leslie if you have any further questions. And we will be in touch with you as well uh, with some information that you may, you may need um, after this webinar is complete. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will also again make this um, recording available to you if you would like um, so that you can share it or rewatch it and uh, we will go for there. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Stay, stay safe, stay, stay healthy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.